Hi everybody, welcome to the fire station here in LeGrand. My name is Emmett Hornford, I'm the fire chief. And we're gonna take a tour of the station. I have some friends out in the bay that'll show you around. I'll show you a picture board here first of our, this is all the members of our paid staff. We have three shifts of five people. And then I'm the fire chief and we have the administrative assistant. We'll head this way through the lobby. This is just the lobby where we uh, welcome our, group, our visitors and, and uh, do any kind of paperwork, burn permits, those types of things. And out this way is our apparatus bay. So this is our apparatus bay where we keep all our equipment. I'll have Luke Lasuro, he's one of our firefighter paramedics, show you the ambulance next. Hi everybody. So if we can take a look inside here, um, we have everything we need here to save people's lives. We have all different types of medications and all different types of things. So if someone is in a medical emergency, we can do everything we can to help them. I'm just going to show you guys a couple things here. So this is our what we call our gurney. It's what we put people on to bring them to the hospital. So it's all automatic. All we do is just pull it out, click some buttons, and it goes down. And then we can pull it out and bring it wherever we need to bring it to. Uh, this is what we call our monitor. So with this, we can do all kinds of things. We can take people's blood pressures. Um, we put a little thing on your finger that checks your pulse as well as your oxygen saturation. Um, on this side, we can also take out and put little stickers on you. Um, and check pictures of your heart and see what your heart's doing. Another thing we have here is a stethoscope. We can put this in our ears and then we put this up to people's chest and we can listen to their heart tones and we can see how much air is going in and out of their lungs. Um, with that, that's pretty much everything on the ambulance and we can move over here to firefighter Dusty Allen. Hey there. Whose parents have a toolbox at home? Okay, I have a toolbox at home. I know my parents had a toolbox, a toolbox at home when I was a kid. This right here, this is our toolbox that we use for fires. This is our fire engine, our first out engine. It has lots of different tools. Right here you can see these are air packs that we wear on our backs so that when we go into a fire or smoke filled building, we can breathe easily because that smoke's not good for you to breathe in. You don't want to breathe that in. We have a fan here to help get some of that smoke out. We have different smaller extinguishers. Uh, if we take a look around the engine here, we have hoses that we can pull so that we can spray water on the fire, help put that out. Up there, you see we have different ladders and tools. If we need to pull ceiling or pull any kind of roof off or anything, we can do that. We have different axes. We have lots of different tools that we get to use. Right here is my favorite one. You want to take a look inside the back of the engine here. I'm sure you'll notice that in the, our seats, we have our air packs built in. So that's so that we can put those on while we're going in route to fires and be ready to go when we get on scene of the fire. We also have different radios so that we make sure we can communicate with each other. Uh, if we go up here, this is where the officer sits. So they're able, they have a computer that they can look and get more information on our calls when we're going to the calls and they can make more decisions about what kind of response we're gonna be making on each call. Come around here. This is where the apparatus operator sits. So whoever's in, gonna be driving that day, this is where they're gonna sit. If we just are going on a fire call, we turn all of our lights on so you can Make sure people can see us and move out of the way a lot easier while we're driving to the calls. We also have an air horn that's loud so that people can hear us and move out of the way also. And we do have a siren too. If you come around this way, you'll see we have more hose that we can pull out. We have a penetrating nozzle in here. We have another little ladder we can use and 
Right here we have our accountability board so that we can keep track of who's going into the fire so we don't lose anybody. We don't want to misplace any of our firefighters. On this side, if we have trouble getting into a building or a house, we have tools that we can use to either break through the door, pry the door open, uh, any kind of way we can get in is pretty much we're going to use any of these tools here. This right here is pretty much the same as the other side. We have air packs and extra bottles here. And then right here, we have some extra hose, depending on what type of fire we're going to, we might need to lay some extra hose out. We have extra nozzles for two and a half inch hose, so bigger hose. This stuff is smaller hose. If we're using the bigger hose, we need a bigger nozzle. And then down here, some of the favorite stuff, this is chainsaws and our circular saw so we can cut through different types of materials with each saw. These can cut through wood and some metal and this cuts through metal really well. So that's pretty much it for our toolbox of the fire truck. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at our other toolbox here. We have our rescue truck. Right here this one has a lot of nice big tools. I know I, that's one of my favorite things when I come into the fire station. Right here we have portable rams. These we can use if somebody gets in a car accident and the dash is pushed down on their legs, we can use that to push the dash off their legs and get them out safely. Right here we have some struts. These are used to help stabilize cars or other kind of anything else that might need stabilizing. We can prop it up and hold it so we can safely work underneath there. Down here, these are what most of you probably know as the jaws of life. So we have a couple we have these are our cutters so these can cut most uh, cars nowadays and they can cut you know all the posts and everything and allow us to access our patients and get people out of the cars and then right here these are our spreaders we can use these to pinch parts of the car or spread things apart Those things are pretty heavy, they're not light. It, doesn't, it takes a lot more work to use those. If you wanna come around this way. In here, we have our airbags. So these airbags, we can take if something's pretty much smooshed on the ground and we can't lift it ourselves, we can slide this, this under there and lift it up. These airbags will each lift around 8,000 pounds. So that's a lot. And then that's pretty much all, all of the cool tools on our rescue. Are you guys ready to look at our biggest truck? Okay. So this right here is our ladder truck. This ladder truck is really nice and we're very grateful that we have it. This truck will reach to the top of the tallest building in La Grande. So does everybody know what the top of the, tall, uh, the tallest building in La Grande is? It's a SAC Annex. So that red brick building downtown. And we can get all the way to the top of it. So we try to have all of our apparatus set up pretty similar so that we can know where everything is. So we have some tools back here. We can use these to, we have a ladder, we have some forcible entry tools so that we can help make entry into buildings. And then if you look inside here, it's pretty much it looks almost the exact same as the fire engine. We have our SCBAs in our seats, we have radios in there, we have flashlights, and then right here's the basket. So if we go get in that, we can go up and raise up to 100 feet in the air. Over here, we have some more forceful entry tools, axes, sledgehammers, and then on this side, since we do have part-time firefighters that come in 
Uh, and just to rhyme on the fire scene, we have extra SCDA packs just like we do on 45. And same for here. Then back here, we again have a fan and some more nozzles so that we, depending on the type of hose we're using, we can switch it up. Okay, so let's go back over here and we'll see Captain Merle Lacey. So here's Captain Merle Lacey and he'll continue the tour for you. Come on kids, let's go upstairs and see where we live. Thanks for coming up here, um, see where we live. We, uh, we stay here for 48 hours at a time um, and so it's, it's a couple of days. Um, we um, and then we get four days off, but uh, for the for those 48 hours we got to um, eat and we got to sleep and uh, stuff like that. So um, I'll take you and show you one of our uh, rooms. kids this is one of our rooms uh, we have a bed that we we can sleep on to rest at night um, we also have a place to put our clothes um, we have some speakers and lights that talk to us in the middle of the night um, when we need to go on a call or uh, or somebody needs some help so this is one of the rooms we do get a chance to sleep at night and uh, we'll go over here and we'll take a look at the day room So this is our day room. How many of you think we um, we have to uh, eat during that 48 hour period? Sure, we have to cook meals and, uh, and eat some food. So we have uh, uh, stoves, we have refrigerators, we have a table we can sit at and eat. Uh, we also have a place that we can relax. We have some chairs and a TV that we can watch when we're not uh, running calls or when we're not uh, training or doing some public service. So this is our day room um, and where we just kind of relax a little bit. Another thing that we do is we um, have to uh, work out. We have to stay in shape. And so we have a workout room. Uh, we have treadmills, weights, um, pretty much anything that we need to, uh, to have to, to stay in shape and to make sure we're ready to respond to the next call and to help people that need our help. So this is our weight room. Come around this way, kids. We also have a laundry area. This is where we uh, wash our clothes, make sure our clothes are clean for the next shift um, and throughout the shift. Um, and uh, we don't wanna take anything home with us. So we make sure we leave our clothes here. So, okay, we'll come out here and we, uh, we have a fire pole that we um, they, uh, we can slide down to if we need to, and uh, firefighter Luke Lucero um, will show us how that's done. So, so we use a fire pole if we're upstairs at night, or if we're upstairs eating lunch, or upstairs for any reason really. Um, that allows us to get to our engine or our ambulance if we need to get there faster for our EMS or our fire calls. So what we do here is we stick our leg all the way around the pool and then wrap it with our elbow and then grab it with the other one and just slide down. Alrighty guys, now we will go out to firefighter Joe Hewitt out here. He is going to demonstrate on how we put all of our fire pants and our fire coat and everything on to get to where we can fight fire inside someone's home. Hi kids, I'm firefighter Joe Hewitt. I'm gonna show you some of the protective gear we wear when we go inside a, a house fire. So when we do go in a house fire, we experience very high temperatures. So we have to wear clothes that are resistant to those temperatures. If there's any part of our skin that's exposed, we can get burned. So the idea is that we're 100% covered. So I'm gonna slowly get dressed here and then we're gonna stop along the way and see if you guys can tell me if I'm ready to go in a burning house. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta take off his boots because he's got to go into specialized boots that help protect our feet from those high heats that he was talking about. And he also puts his protective hood on that protects your head and, as well as your ear and down and around your neck. 
So we gotta make sure everything's buttoned up, zipped up, and put on right so we can cover ourselves. What do you think now? Do you think he's ready to go into the fire? Do you think he has skin showing? Let's keep going and see how far he can get before he's ready to go into a fire. So now he's gonna put on his protective coat. He's gotta make sure he gets it all zipped up and he's got some Velcro as well that he needs to make sure that he gets all covered up there. What do you think now, kids? Do you think he's ready to go into a fire? Do you see any skin showing? You're right, he's got his hand showing and his face. So now he's gotta put on his mask. This is what allows us to breathe fresh air. And then he puts his hood over. That also protects his ears, like I was saying earlier. Um, next, he's going to throw on his air pack. This is what holds the air to allow us to breathe that fresh air. So he's got to make sure he gets it all tight. There we go. He's got it all buckled up, gets it all ready. Now, lastly, second to last, he gets his helmet on. That'll protect his head from any falling debris if that's, if that's the case, or if it's super dark and you can't see anything, you might run into a wall or something, that'll protect his head. So that beeping is him turning on his SCBA, which allows the air to go through the, these tubes and allows him to breathe that fresh air. So now the last thing for him to do is put on his gloves and he's almost ready to go into a fire. So now what we do, since he's got all of his protective gear on, we're going to do a 360 and check to make sure that around his mask and all down, up and down, keep going Joe, and everything is showing no skin. So if he gets into those hot conditions, he'll be protected. So what he's going to do here, he's going to walk around and crawl around. If you kids are ever in a fire and you hear someone yelling, try saying something, Joe. Can you hear me? Hello, is there anybody in here? Can you hear me? So if you ever hear that, you always want to say something back to me. You never want to hide. We're there to help you. I know it kind of sounds weird, but we're there to help you. So you need to yell out so can we can me? get you out of that is house. Is there anybody there? Can you hear me? Let me know where you're at. Hello. All right, kids, come on. We got one more thing left. Go up in the ladder truck with Firefighter Allen and see what it looks like from way up there. So climb in. Climb in. Got a harness for you to put on. This is a really special tree. Not everybody gets to do this, so. As I mentioned earlier, we're very lucky to have this ladder truck. We're up 100 feet in the air right now, and it's super windy today, but we're really stable and we're not blowing around in the wind. If you want to go ahead and take a look down the ladder here, you can see how far up it really looks. And then we practice climbing up and down this ladder to make sure that we're able to do it in fire situations. Getting up on the ladder is really nice on any day because you're able to look all over the valley and see how beautiful it is here in the Grand Ronde Valley and how lucky we are to live here.